Okay, this is Peter O'Rourke with NAPSIG Foundation, and today we're doing a virtual training session on the Fire Department of New York's use of geospatial tools for the most recent Super Bowl. Um, we apologize in advance to our friends from Denver, uh, but we will, and we will not be showing any video of the actual Super Bowl. Um, Captain Polikoff is uh, <laughs> a cha chairman of our NAPSIG uh, regional leadership team for the tri-state area, um, and he's involved in, in other national organizations that use uh, GIS. Um, and we're very fortunate to have Captain Polikoff uh, participating in this session. Um, so, Steve, we'll turn it over to you. Great. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so, uh, as Pete mentioned, we uh, had uh, hosted the Super Bowl this year, um, and uh, we were um, very, uh, like right before the holidays, we were tasked with putting together uh, some applications uh, to support the event. Um, as many of you know or, or know me or see my past presentations, um, we do a lot of uh, special event mapping throughout the year, uh, but this was obviously uh, probably a, a once in a career for me, uh, being that my career is winding down. Um, and also, you know, we don't know if and when we'll have the Super Bowl here again in New York, so uh, it pretty much was a one-time event for us, but it was obviously a huge event. Uh, now, Pete mentioned that we weren't going to show any videos of, of uh, the Denver Broncos, which I, I guarantee I, I won't do, uh, especially for my friend Dave Blankenship. Um, but uh, I just do want to be clear on something as, as a, you know, hosting the Super Bowl here in New York and New Jersey, uh, th this is the scenario that we were really hoping for. Uh, was to have a snow-covered field and um, and be one of the coldest Super Bowls on record. Uh, this snowstorm here was actually a few days prior to the Super Bowl, uh, or actually, I, I believe, about a week prior to the Super Bowl, uh, and they actually uh, took these measures to, uh, you know, test the employees to, you know, try to clear clear the stands and everything in case we did get hit with a Super Bowl. I, I'm sorry, a snowstorm. Um, the NFL did make the decision that if a uh, snowstorm was going to be that bad, uh, they were considering uh, changing uh, the day, for, uh, either the Saturday prior to the storm coming or, or possibly a, a Monday night Super Bowl. Uh, but as it turned out, it was a, a nice, beautiful day, and I, I believe the temperatures hit 50 degrees that day. Um, and then just also I want to go on the record of is this is how we wanted Super Bowl 48 to be. Uh, as with the New York Giants uh, being the champions, but uh, we didn't even make the playoffs this year, so that wasn't going to happen. But again, can't just for the record. Can't win them every year. <laughs> we tried. Um, so in actuality, it turned out to be the Seahawks and, and the Broncos, and uh, which was kind of good and bad for me, uh, you know, to support my friend Chris Rogers out in uh, – Washington and support my friend Dave out in Colorado. Um, and it was, um, like I mentioned, a bi-state event uh, because the Meadowlands, or I'm sorry, MetLife Stadium now uh, is actually in New Jersey. Um, but because the two teams, the Jets and the Giants, are considered New York teams and their, their uh, headquarters are here in New York, uh, New York is still involved. So what they did was they took Midtown Manhattan from uh, Broadway to uh, Broadway and 33rd Street up to Broadway and 48th Street and transformed it into the Super Bowl Boulevard where all these pre-Super Bowl events were going on. Uh, this is just some uh, pictures of some of the various events. Uh, you have the NFL, uh, uh, the Fox NFL robot. Uh, you can see in the top right the uh, field goal kick. Uh, you had this big Roman numeral stage. Uh, where there was uh, concerts and the Vince Lombardi Trophy was displayed there. And, uh, and like I said, the, all of Midtown was transformed into these various events for the week. So this um, left us with a lot of challenges. Like I said, normally a lot of our special event mapping goes on paper. Uh, we have a, a lot of uh, challenges uh, here with New York uh, City Fire Department with our firewall and our security issues. 
um, and it's very hard for us to get our data uh, outside of this building. Uh, so a lot of times, a lot of our, w our web mapping actually takes place within our firewalls. Uh, but for an event like this, where most of our people were working outside, um, that type of solution wouldn't really help us too much. Um, like I mentioned, we, we got hit with this right before Christmas, and uh, a couple of our staff chiefs saw a demonstration of um, a web map that was done for Charlotte, North Carolina, for their Democratic National Convention. Uh, so we were asked to view a webinar of the application, um, and after the webinar, uh, we were, you know, asked if we could do, you know, something similar. Uh, so we went to our uh, vendor and our good friend uh, Penn Bay Solutions, and uh, specifically Ben Yetman from New York City. And uh, we had already purchased about a year ago uh, Penn Bay's Envision Secure uh, product. So along with them, um, we started working on, on these various tasks, uh, trying to get all the events mapped out throughout New York City and New Jersey. Uh, we obviously ran into several challenges. Um, one of the biggest challenges was the, the, the large amount of events going on between the, uh, the two states. Uh, a lot of these events were hosted and sponsored by the NFL, uh, but then along with that, uh, there were, I'll say, non-sanctioned NFL uh, events, such as concerts and everything else, that were being held because of Super Bowl, uh, but were not officially sanctioned by the NFL. So just going to the NFL's website and trying to pull out what events and where they were going to be um, worked well, but then we also had the challenge of finding out the non-NFL-sponsored events. Um, besides uh, being a, a bi-state event, uh, we also had several agencies in New York City and New Jersey uh, that were involved, uh, and I'm sorry, also uh, state and federal uh, organizations uh, that were involved, and we had to coordinate um, and share data with them and find out you know, any data that they had that we wanted to include. Um, we had 45 temporary venues that were set up on Super Bowl Boulevard. And between the two jurisdictions, it covered 197 square miles. And as I mentioned, we had a very quick timeline on this. Uh, we were hit with this about a week prior to Christmas. Uh, so then along with the holidays and everything else, uh, that time span shortened. Um, and we actually wanted to have something up and running uh, for demo purposes, for training purposes, and make sure everything worked properly. Uh, the week prior to Super Bowl Boulevard uh, opening. So as I mentioned, we did a lot of event coordination um, and with the uh, Envision Secure product, um, we had to really think about how we were gonna do this. Uh, fortunately enough, uh, and you'll see it in the live demo, uh, we were given uh, CAD drawings, blueprint drawings of Super Bowl Boulevard by a company called Party Planners West based out of California. Uh, they were the, the company that was hired by the NFL uh, to coordinate the efforts of setting up everything and planning everything down Super Bowl Boulevard. Uh, and they were very generous to give us their, their blueprint drawings uh, so we could map it out. Uh, but one of the things we were facing was the fact that we had these uh, 40 plus venues throughout uh, Super Bowl Boulevard, but we had many events hosted at, at each one of these venues. Uh, so we were trying to figure out a good way to display those events based on the venues. Um, we started uh, with the Envision Secure software, uh, we had the ability to create these plans. Um, now plans could be anything from, you know, just a, a minor incident um, where you could actually set up uh, permissions where you could put a point on the map, uh, let's say for a fire at a building, and then associated with that plan um, or that event, uh, you could assign the resources uh, to that event. Uh, then at any time you could uncheck that layer for that event, and not only will that event disappear off your map, but any associated uh, resources to that event will also 
be removed from the map. Uh, we also had a lot of uh, road closures. Um, we had road closures uh, for the the trucks coming in from Jersey with all the equipment for the setup and dismantlement of all the venues. Within the Super Bowl Boulevard zone, um, Broadway itself was completely shut down, but many of the crossroads were open. But then we did have certain crossroads that were labeled as open, but were, uh, were limited to uh, access due to the equipment on the side streets. Um, in typical fashion of the incident command structure and, and the way the FDNY does business, we uh, marked out the various zones for our resources. Um, we had some IMT uh, incident management team resources on hand, uh, that they were kind of limited in their capacity. Uh, they were pretty much on standby, monitoring uh, the whole week um, in case anything bad went down within the zone or anywhere in the city for that matter, um, and they would be the first resources to start activating people, uh, personnel from the incident management team. And then, you know, operationally, uh, like I said, we had put together our, our first task, well, in actuality, our only task at the time was to put together this web map application. Um, of course, when we got this whole thing together and we started demoing it uh, to the FDNY CIO and the FDNY commissioner and some of the staff chiefs. Uh, they were all very impressed with the web application, but then came the question, okay, well, how do we see this uh, down in the field and in people's hands? Um, like I said, we have some severe uh, issues of getting data outside of this building due to our security, uh, so Penbase Solutions was kind enough to offer up their Amazon cloud server uh, so we could host our services up there, along with, with internally on our own web servers, um, and then we pass those services through ArcGIS Online and utilize the, the ESRI ArcGIS app on the iPads. Uh, the department uh, was so impressed with this application and the demos that they actually went out and purchased 25 iPads, um, you know, to utilize them for this event. Um, we made the offer, even though we couldn't uh, dictate to anybody to, to use it, but we did make the offer if anybody had their own iPads or their own Android devices uh, or iPhones. Uh, we could give them a login after they downloaded the app and they could use it on their own personal devices. Uh, you can see in this slide that we were, uh, they were using the application for the daily incident action plan briefings. Uh, as mentioned, iPads and iPhones. Our mobile command center, which was uh, down, I believe, on uh, 47th Street, I believe, uh, they were use, utilizing it inside the vehicle. Um, and then I'm going to demo some of the other, uh, the access to the, to the CCTVs and the pre-incident guidelines uh, with the live demo of the map. And we worked with several agencies, including NYPD, uh, OEM, New York City Department of Transportation, New Jersey OEM, uh, Port Authority, New York, New Jersey, New York State OEM, New Jersey OIT, uh, the FBI, uh, the mayor's office, uh, DOH, and, and New York City Do It, which is Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications. Uh, so not only did we work with these agencies to try to gather the data, um, but we thought it would only be fair that once we uh, tasked them to help us so much to build this application, uh, we issued logins to the application for them to utilize within their own agencies. Uh, so we'll we'll just give a a quick uh, demo of the map. And our Wi-Fi isn't overly good here, so uh, some things might act a little slow. 
Uh, but like I mentioned, you can see all the events throughout the city. Um, you can see here these events in the outer boroughs up in the Bronx and Queens and Staten Island uh, were actually some of the non-sponsored NFL events. Um, and then this cluster of event icons in, in New Jersey is actually where the MetLife Stadium is. And then uh, right here in Midtown, uh, you could see where all the events were being held at, in Super Bowl Boulevard. So as we zoom in, you'll start uh, seeing uh, our resources pop up on the map. Uh, you could see uh, the ambulance icons um, uh, and the square icons with the G in them is what we refer to as gators. Uh, so they're kind of like an oversized golf cart uh, that we could trans uh, transport patients on. And the icon with the A and the icon with the H are fire teams. Uh, the A is for the alarm investigation teams and the H is for hammer teams, which are that are hazmat teams. Uh, these teams are a two-man team. They walk around on foot. Um, and similar to the Gators, they will handle anything within the zone, uh, any, any buildings that have an alarm, or like I said, the Gators will treat any patients within the, within the zone. And if there's an incident at a building, uh, the alarm investigation team will check it out. And if it's an actual fire within the building, at that point, we would then send in apparatus. Um, you know, but essentially the point is, is that we don't want to bring apparatus, uh, multiple apparatus, into the zone when we have a million attendees walking around. So we try to limit that as, as much as possible. Uh, with the application, you can actually click on these icons. Uh, you, you gives you the information about that unit, what radio designation they are, um, where they're supposed to be and what they're covering. And obviously the event is over now. Uh, but we had the crew members that were working on that uh, on that uh, unit. Uh, same thing with the alarm investigation teams. You could see what team number they are and, and the crews that were working on that team. So these purple icons here represent the various venues, uh, the polygons here. And as you can see, we have multiple events in in many of the in many of the polygons. So the challenge was how do we represent all these multiple events in, in one venue? And we were able to accomplish that um, as soon as I find one here um, by clicking on the polygon, it gives you various tabs in the pop-up for that polygon. So in the, in the case of the Roman numeral stage, we could click on here and we could see that we have six different events that were held at that, at that venue. Uh, you could click on any one of the events and, and find out when it was, what it is, and the, and the date, I mean, I'm sorry, the time that the, the event was being held. Uh, we also included a tab with links. So in this case, you could actually click on this link and it will open up a PDF of the floor plan from Party Planners West. And this is the detail. Hey, yes. Uh, sorry, Steve. It's Peter. We have a, some questions that we can save for later, but a couple questions that are relevant to what you've been showing. Um, so okay. let me just read two, two of them quickly. Um, one of them is, were the ambulances live tracked on the map, or are the icons that you were showing um, representative of the post locations? And then similar question is, did you use any type of AVL to track the assets of the teams as they move throughout the field? Okay, the, the answer is no. Uh, these are static points of where the units were assigned. Um, our ambulances are, are outfitted with GPS and AVL. Our gators are not. And currently with our, our current CAD system, uh, we're unable to bring the GPS locations uh, into an XML document or, a, or um, a feature service to display on the flex map. Uh, the fire department is, uh, well, actually I should say, has already purchased a new CAD system. Um, we purchased it about a year ago and we're in the design and configuration phase of the project. And with the new Integraph system, 
Uh, we've had many discussions with Intergraph, and that's something that we will be able to do when we go, uh, actually I shouldn't say when we go live, uh, it's part of a phase three of the project. Uh, where we, we will be bringing in the AVL data uh, into our ArcGIS server and able to display them on the map. Uh, but currently at this time, the answer is no. Um, and then uh, along with, um, you know, the various venues, uh, if you notice some of these uh, building footprints went from a light gray to a dark gray, um, so these buildings are buildings that we have what we call building information cards or VIC cards. Um, it's a very uh, daily routine during dispatching of, of the fire apparatus uh, that if there's this VIC card available, uh, the dispatcher will read the information uh, about that building. Uh, so we highlighted those in gray uh, so that then gave us the ability to click on the building um, and then you could get, you know, some information, including uh, this, what we call the bin number or building identification number. We use this bin number here in New York City. Um, every building, theoretically, uh, it's still being worked on, has a unique identification number. We can't use addressing on buildings because we have many buildings with multiple addresses. Uh, so we use this bin. And with this bin number, we're able to tie it uh, to this information in the in the in this bit card. Uh, again, for this application, we just hyperlinked it to the to the PDF. Uh, you could see the information about that building. Uh, there's a schematic of the stairwells and, and elevators for that building. And then, in certain cases, um, not really in this one, uh, there will be some floor plans of that building. Uh, Along with the, the big cards, uh, we also have some buildings with pre-plans, or as we call them, pre-incident guidelines. Um, I'm just trying to find a building here with a uh, pre-plan. There we go. So this icon with the I in it will give us the pre-plan. Same thing, we hyperlinked uh, from that building to this PDF document. Uh, all this information is collected by the uh, local fire company and entered into a form online. And I'm sorry, my PDFs are going a little crazy on the WebEx. Uh, and then it also includes a map uh, that was produced by this unit and then snapshots from pictometry of all four ex uh, exposures of that building. Uh, also here, um, now we have certain information. Uh, we actually have uh, detailed uh, blueprints of the subway stations. Uh, that was a multi-year project. Uh, they were geo-rectified by New York City OEM and turned into feature classes. Uh, but being that we were hosting this up on the Amazon cloud, uh, we have some very strict MOUs with New York City Transit. Uh, so we didn't want to, we couldn't take that data and put it up in the cloud. What we were given the permission to do was to utilize some uh, PDFs that we have of those subway stations. So in the same method, you just click on the subway station point, and from there we would hyperlink uh, over to that PDF document of the subway station. Uh, you can see here the envelopes uh, or the outlines of the subway station, uh, some schematics of the station, um, and then some PDF documents of the floor plans. Um, and there's also PDF documents of the uh, third rail, the electrical power to the, to the trains themselves. And also we wanted to, especially for people that were not going to be down there, uh, we wanted them to have some live shots, so we, excuse my map refreshes here, uh, included the points of cameras. Uh, we actually had two different types of cameras. We had the New York City Department of Transportation uh, camera feeds, uh, so that's a live look at that traffic cam, and yes, it is snowing here again today. Um, and then also, we somebody informed the, 
informed us of this website called EarthCam, um, and we included the camera feeds from them. It's a hyperlink to their website. Uh, it takes a few minutes to load. Uh, I'm probably not going to wait for it here, or it's unavailable. Um, oh, there it goes. Um, but these are high-resolution cameras um, right in and around Times Square. There's only about four of them, uh, but gave us a nice look into Times Square. Uh, you can see here over on uh, 41st Street, this is where the main part of our resources were, our incident command post and our IMT vehicle. Uh, we're all staged there, and that's where the vehicles were staged at night. Um, we also added in, uh, which we didn't really utilize that much because we were trying to get it out as fast as possible, uh, but this is something that we're going to visit in the future. But we actually gave the ability uh, to people to be able to uh, edit, uh, I'm sorry, not edit, uh, add points to the map. Uh, they could add in uh, some information. Uh, in this case, it was just a free form text uh, that they would add in, and then they could take a snapshot of, um, you know, whatever they wanted to with their iPad or, or mobile device and add it into the map. Then another key component that we thought would be important um, is a search engine. Uh, so not only you know, could we just search for a, an address, but Penbase Solutions uh, gave us the ability to search for various items. So we were able to search for any one of our resources. So I could search for AIT. I could zoom into that alarm investigation team. Um, I could search for Gator. It will give me a listing of the Gators, zooming into that. Uh, we could also search by event. So I could search for concerts. Uh, this would give me uh, a listing of, of the concerts that were being held. I could click on one. It's going to zoom me into that venue and give me that information. Um, we could also search by, uh, I, I'm sorry, the concerts were the events, uh, but we could also search by venue. So I could put in Bud Light. Uh, we could search for this Bud Light Hotel, uh, which was actually a cruise ship. Uh, that was brought into the west side and they had many parties and, and concerts held on the ship. You can see we had nine various events held there. Um, we kind of, well, we knew it was a cruise ship, but we didn't specifically know what that cruise ship was going to look like. Uh, so we hyperlinked right to their website. And um, as soon as it loads here, their website is kind of cool. Um, and you could actually see schematics of each one, each floor of the ship. Uh, so we thought that would be important in case there was any sort of incident on that ship. Um, and then most importantly, um, which I probably should have mentioned in the beginning, um, as everything refreshes here. So we, these, some of our staff chiefs, you know, saw this application in uh, North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, and and one of the things that they had really liked about the application uh, was the fact that they could see during the Democratic National Convention the events held during the convention that were going on right now, and the events that were coming up. Um, so that, that was our initial requirement for this map. Um, what Penn Bay built for us was exactly that. We had these uh, two widgets, which would show us all the current events. Now, this is just a sample uh, for, this, for this webinar, because uh, obviously all the events are closed at this time. Um, and then we also had this widget for the upcoming events. Uh, so it was, it was a nice list. Uh, anybody that was working the event could see exactly what was going on for that day. They could click on here on this widget. It'll zoom you right in. Uh, if for some reason you wanted to see an upcoming event, you could click on that widget, and it would uh, zoom you over to that location. Uh, the other neat part was that Penbase Solutions 
built this event tool um, or event filter, and we can actually take it and query it uh, over the course of a few days or just one day. And then it would give you a listing of all the events going on within that time frame. And like I said, it may not work because the events have happened already. Uh, but like I said, it would give you a nice filter to see the events uh, listed in this graph, and then you could click on any one of them and zoom into that location. So I, unfortunately, over the webinar, I can't really show the iPad application, um, but I just wanted to include some screenshots. These were the services uh, that we were feeding through ArcGIS Online. Um, so you can actually log in, you know, to the ArcGIS Online uh, application. Uh, ESRI was nice enough to supply us 60 extra seats to ArcGIS Online so we could accommodate our users. Uh, we had a shared group on ArcGIS Online uh, so we could transfer data and share data um, with the various agencies that we were working with. And then from there, we would, like I mentioned, we were feeding it right into the iPad app in this case. Uh, there were some users that tried it out on the Android uh, tablets also, uh, and that worked just as well. Um, along in the iPad app, uh, we had uh, this menu where you could do just same as the filter. Uh, you could turn on and off the dates, and depending on the date that you were working, you could turn that on and see only the events that were held on that date. Uh, just a little bit closer look on the iPad app. Uh, as, again, as we zoom in, you start seeing the resources assigned to that event. And then you could, same matter as the web, uh, you could click on a point and see who was working and, and what unit that was. And we always get a lot of questions of what a gator is, uh, so we included a, a picture of a gator uh, so people understand what that uh, vehicle is. Um, and as I mentioned, public uh, uh, pen based solutions was just uh, instrumental in, in helping us with this. Uh, along with all the agencies that we worked with to gather the data, um, we felt it was a, a great application that we, we had produced in a short amount of time. Um, and we got a lot of good feedback internally from the department and also from other agencies. Um, and as we proceed forward, we want to try to utilize this, uh, this platform more and more often. Uh, my staff members, uh, especially Captain Brady, um, did so much work on this and, and getting the data, uh, scouring the internet for the various venues and scouring the internet for the, the events. Um, he was instrumental in this project. And ESRI, again, the New York City office, who's uh, always great to us, uh, really stepped up their efforts to help us get this going through ArcGIS Online. Uh, as well as ESRI's public safety team. Um, as always, Rush Johnson uh, you know, gives us all the support that we need. Uh, so that's about all I have. Um, and Pete, I don't know how you want to do questions. Should I just? Yeah, we do, we do have a bunch of questions. Um, <clears throat> it's nice of you to acknowledge Captain Brady's role. Uh, we all know he's the brains and you're the beauty, so that's great. That's why I get to sit around with my feet up on the desk. <laughs> so we have a lot of questions about uh, data security, generally speaking, um, and I'll try to read two quickly. But can you comment on security concerns um, by the cooperating agencies and, and really vis-a-vis -vis AGOL um, and how the data was shared and, and was the data security with an AGOL considered adequate? Um, and then kind of con um, another question that's similar would be, uh, PenBay was nice enough to offer their Amazon Cloud access to you to get the data outside of your firewall, but what would you do in the future given the success of this if you don't have that PenBay access? Okay, yes. Yeah, so, so what we did with security is um, we put up, you know, anything on the Amazon Cloud that we created um, or we had permission for. So, so the stuff with the subway 
uh, PDFs. Uh, our public transportation liaison um, went out and got permission for us to put it up. Uh, we did limit it, that data to only the subway stations within Super Bowl Boulevard. Uh, so if I were to pan around to other parts of the city, you wouldn't see those icons um, and couldn't uh, obtain that data. Um, we did encourage our users um, that if they were on the internal FDNY network, uh, that they should use the web application hosted on our servers, which we replicated um, between the Amazon Cloud uh, and our web server. And within our network, um, you know, we were able to post, you know, data that we didn't feel comfortable putting out on the Amazon Cloud. Um, moving forward, uh, we had actually have had some discussions uh, about an Amazon Cloud server, and I, a couple months ago, actually was given the permission to go ahead and purchase one. And now that the Super Bowl event was so successful, um, especially from the mobile end, and especially from people being able to see it not being in, in the network. Um, we, we've been given the go-ahead to purchase one. Uh, so we're in the process of doing that. Uh, I will forewarn anybody looking into an Amazon Cloud server. Uh, their website is so confusing and there are so many different options. Uh, so it's been taking me some time to figure it out and, and talk to a lot of different people to figure out what I want. Uh, but that's the solution we're going with in the future. Okay, thanks, Steve. Uh, another question, uh, all the way bright and early from Honolulu, is uh, was the app used as a repository for the event incident action plan and or related ICS forms? Uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, honestly, I never even thought about something like that. Um, I actually kind of like that idea, and I actually just had a meeting prior to this webinar with some members of our incident management team. Um, and we were talking about mobile solutions. Um, it's something I'll definitely consider. All right, Gary, great recommendation then. Thank you. Uh, another question is how much bigger in terms of personnel and attendees was this than a, a typical New Year's Eve? Uh, about the same. Uh, generally for New Year's Eve, we have a million attendees. Um, and, you know, I was told in news reports that we had about a million attendees uh, for Super Bowl Boulevard. Uh, I do know the first day, and I think even the second day, uh, attendance was a little bit low, uh, but it was very cold. Um, the, actually, the first day that it opened, uh, myself and, and Ben Yetman from Penn Bay Solutions, uh, we went down to the command post uh, to give demos or anybody that needed assistance on figuring out the iPad app. Uh, we went down there for a couple hours. Uh, we did a walk through a Super Bowl Boulevard, um, and it was extremely cold. Uh, so they had figured with the the cold weather that dropped attendance, um, and but they had also figured as uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday approach as people were flying in for the game itself, uh, that attendance would go up. And like I said, I heard that there was over a million attendees. Okay, thanks. Um, I think, Mikey, the final question is, uh, is a similar map solution in place internal to FDNY that's updated on a timely basis uh, to see citywide events mapped and to obtain BIC, BIC cards and other information um, important to the operational awareness? Oh, we just lost Steve. Yeah, I, I'm here. Uh, oh, no, you're here. Okay. Yeah, I told you our Wi-Fi is a little weird sometimes. Oh, got it. Okay. We lost, uh, so your, we lost your image, but that's okay. Um, uh, did you hear that last question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yes. Hey, I'm sorry. Re repeat it one more time. All right. Hold on a second. I got to pull it up. <laughs> Gave me a heart attack. Uh, is a similar map solution in place internal to FDNY that is updated on a timely basis to see citywide events mapped and to obtain BIC cards and other information important for operational awareness? Um, yeah, and again, this this event and this application was was so successful within the department. Um, this is what I've been now tasked with is to expand this to to a citywide 
uh, application. Uh, so we'll have our current internal web map already has all the pre-incident guidelines on it, uh, but we are going to move forward with the with the big cards. Uh, again, with the internal network, we'll have the geo-rectified uh, floor plans of all the subway stations. Uh, one of the other challenges that we we've always had is that with the the subway floor plans, our MOU states that only a battalion chief or higher uh, can see those plans, um, including a few other uh, personnel such as myself and my staff. Um, but um, the web map had to be password protected, and our current web map internal is not password protected. Uh, but with the new Envision Secure, we have that capability, so that'll be going up there. And as we move forward with Integraph, um, we discussed how ABL is eventually going to be incorporated into this. But along with that, we've had discussions with Integraph that we want to bring in feeds from the CAD system of call locations uh, for EMS and fire, and we're going to serve that up through ArcGIS server and display that on the map too. Uh, the only problem with that is once we get it into our system, uh, we want to filter it a little bit. We don't want to be seeing um, between EMS and fire approximately 5,000 runs each day on the map. Uh, so we'll probably filter it by um, an actual, you know, fire, uh, all hands fire or greater. Um, and for the EMS side, the high priority assignments uh, will be displayed on the map. So as again, as we move forward, yes, this is going to be um, an everyday use application, uh, along with uh, you know the main part of our special events. That's great, thanks. Uh, so we have one last question. Um, you, you mentioned that about 18 agencies uh, had access to this. Do you have an idea uh, how many actual individual um, personnel actually made use of this application? Um, no, we don't know exactly who. Um, Ten Bay Solutions uh, did increase the server side of um, of the instance on the Amazon cloud to handle the traffic. Um, I was told by Penn Bay when they looked at some of the statistics that there were spikes at various times on the Amazon cloud, uh, but we don't know specifically who and, and where it was utilized. Okay, thanks, Steve. Um, and thank you very much uh, to you, Captain Polakoff, and to your team for, for participating in this uh, MAPSIG Foundation virtual training. Uh, for those of you who can see my screen right now, I'll, I'll just highlight where you can go to uh, the resource section up here to gain access to the download of this. Um, I would presume it will be up and available on top here uh, either later today or at the latest tomorrow sometime. Uh, feel free to download it and share that link with whoever you like. Um, uh, Steve, any closing remarks from you? Um, no, like I said, it just you know, most importantly, I, I know some of the agencies that we worked with are are on the webinar, and again, I you know, a lot of thanks to them and and to my staff on uh, all the great work to put this together. Yeah, and thank you for sharing, uh, taking some time to share that with us. And, and most important, we thank everyone for participating in this session. Um, we get a lot of our ideas for what to do for the training session from you all. Uh, so please let us know if you have more ideas going forward. Um, that'll conclude the recording. And thank.